What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a video I've been looking forward to doing for quite a while now and it's the great Aussie coin hunt and this is the Alphabet A to Z $1 set from Australia. Really excited to get into these. I've got the folder here and the tube full of the 26 coins, the 26 different letters. So we're going to have a look through, uh, see what each letter signifies and see what we think about it. I did notice as well when I was looking at this folder um, over these two pages, most of the things on the coins are there. I think there was three or four that I couldn't see. So, yeah, see if you can spot out all of them as we go through. Maybe we'll run through it at the end, see how long this goes on for. And we'll see how many we can spot out. But let's get into the coins. We'll pop this off to the side. Let's have a quick look inside, shall we, first as well. It's just the same design um, on the outside or parts of it replicated on the inside. With a little slot for each letter there for each different dollar to be honest i probably won't keep it in the folder we know what these folders are like for toning coins so i may well just keep them in the tube for now or flip them at some point all right let's try and get these out this might be tricky i think not sure how to do this actually we might be best off doing this There we go. So this has been opened by somebody else already. What they've probably done is the letter A, you can get with a special privy mark sometimes. They probably bought the set, opened it, took it out if they had it, uh, replaced it with another, and then sold it on, which is fine by me. We just wanted the standard set. The one with the privy mark on the letter A costs a lot more. I don't know why I stacked them all up like that. Put them off to the side there. Right, let's get into it. Hopefully they should be in alphabetical order. And here we have the letter A. And as I said, you can get one with a, um, an envelope on this one as well, uh, which is a special, I'm not sure on the minage of that one, but it's quite low and it's worth quite a bit. Uh, but here we go. And we have A for the Australia Post. Headquarters in Melbourne, founded in 1975. And they actually played part in me getting this set because I bought this from Australia. There we go, lovely portrait. Ian Rank Broadly portrait, 2019. That'll be the same on all of them, of course. We'll just focus on the reverse from now onwards. But there's the letter A. On the note of importing these, do be careful because I got stung for £9.18. It was only £1.18 VAT, but then apparently an £8 handling fee from Royal Mail. So thanks for that, Royal Mail. <laughs> I'm not sure how you avoid that, to be honest. Pay the VAT up, VAT up front, but I'm not sure how you do that. Let me know if you know. Back to the coins. And it's B, of course, for Boomerang. Traditionally for hunting, now more of a recreational thing. Still a sporting item as well. Um... I think the record, world record I saw was 2,251 repeated throws of a boomerang going and coming back to one guy. 2,251, that was back in Japan in 2009. There's the obverse again there. The boomerang is one of the ones I couldn't spot on the, um, on the folder, so if you saw it, let me know. C for cricket. Now that's the same as our one, isn't it? C for cricket. Of course, invented in England. The Aussies are pretty good at it though. Um, an unmatched five World Cups they've won, including the treble in 99, 2003 and 2007. Of course, every four years, Cricket World Cup. Um, but England current holders. Decent design though. I like the, the style they've gone with all of them with this is it concentric circles and then one going the opposite way there. There we go, D for didgeridoo. Aboriginal wind instrument. And developed by the Ab Aboriginal peoples over 1500 years ago. And requires a special breathing technique to play called circular breathing, where you're essentially breathing in while exhaling stored air from your cheeks, I think it is, at the same time. So yeah, very interesting. 
Not easy to play the didgeridoo, I don't believe. Next up, we have E for Esky, which is actually a brand name, um, really. And it's just what they call, it's a brand name, but it's become a generic name as well, if you like. Um, and that's what they call their cool box or their chill box in Australia. Much like you call a vacuum cleaner a Hoover, but a Hoover's a brand name, or a jacuzzi as a hot tub. Um, or Tipex, correction fluid. Do you think of any others like that? Let me know in the comments. There's quite a few things like that in the English language over here in the UK. Let me know around the world if there's other similar stuff, things to that. And we've got F. That's not a rugby ball, that's a football. And they call it footy over there. Not rugby, it's a different game. Footy. You've got Aussie rules football. And no one's really sure what influenced all the rules and regulations. Um, it's a massive sport over there as well, hence it making it onto the coin. Uh, but there's strong theories suggesting it is adapted from rugby. And it was actually seen as a way to keep cricketers fit in the winter season, in the off season. And Tom Wills, who had played early versions of rugby back in England, apparently proposed the first set of rules for Australian football in 1858 actually predating official uh, codification of soccer, what we call football, and rugby union. So it was the first um, sport like that with a proper rule set, I think. Next up, we have G for G'day. A bit of a funny one, but they've gone for it. Um, and really, just a, um, a short way of saying good day. Just an abbreviation of G'day, that's all it is. But gained international notoriety back in the 1980s um, from Crocodile Dundee, really. Actor Paul Hogan uh, starred in an advertising campaign as well for Australian tourism. Where he said, G'day. Next up, we've got a bit of a funny one, in my opinion. And this is the Hills Hoist. Um, and it's a rotary washing line. And they actually, this is such an iconic thing in Australia, they were actually massive ones of these in, I think it was the closing ceremony of the Sydney Olympic Games. And these have been made in Adelaide since 1945. And every garden big enough in Australia probably has one. Um, but there is a bit of controversy over this where some people say somebody called Gilbert Toyne was the first real inventor of the rotary washing line but that's up for debate and it's not a subject I'm clued up on. And there we go obviously I've researched all of these so we can have a little chat and tell you exactly what they are because some of them I just do not know. Like this the iced Vovo. Certainly a new one on me. This brand has been around since 1906 Apparently it's a wheat flavour biscuit topped with raspberry jam, pink fondant and coconut. Sounds quite nice. Um, and this isn't the last time we'll mention coconut, actually, funnily enough. Two coconutty entries on the Aussie A to Z. Interesting one, though. Quite a few foodstuffs in general on here, to be honest. Next up, we'll go with another one that I wouldn't know at all if I hadn't looked it up. And it's Jackaroo and Jillaroo. And neither the name is given to uh, somebody going out into the outback and working a sheep or cattle station. Typically, either someone born in the city in Australia or, or a foreigner, usually British uh, historically. Um, and Jillaroos really came to fruition during World War II when, of course, there weren't so many men around to be jackaroos. And since then, jillaroos have certainly been a thing as well. So there you go, jackaroo and jillaroo for J. Next up, we've got K. Will it be koala? Will it be kangaroo? It is kangaroo. Not the first time it's been on Australian coins, for sure. I'm sure it won't be the last. The most famous marsupial of all, arguably. And it's on the one dollar. 
And the 50 cent as well, isn't it, I think? And old pennies and half pennies. The symbol of Australia. Right, what's next? We're back to the coconut already. And this is a lamington. Like the flag in the top there, nice touch. <laughs> Another new one on me, and it's a sponge cake covered in chocolate sauce and coconut. Sounds good to me. I know coconut's kind of a bit marmite, isn't it? It's either you love it or hate it, and I'm a lover, I have to say. I do love a bounty. And when Callie asked me what my favorite cake was, I went for coconut cake. I don't know, maybe that wasn't the best choice, but it's certainly up there as one of my favorites. When I appeared on his video recently, if you've not seen that, definitely go and check him out. Here we've got M for meat pie. Iconic in Australia. Some might even call it the national dish. So popular, in fact, there was even a Domino's meat pie pizza. That is true. There we go. M for meat pie. Now this is one we certainly know over here. There's a bit of toning on this one already. That's not ideal, is it? Down the bottom left there. So maybe they won't stay in the, the tube here. Bit of a shame. But N for neighbours. And there we've got Ramsey Street. You'll certainly know this if you're a little bit older. If you're my sort of age, you'll know this if you live in the UK. Um, some of you younger lot might not have been exposed to it though. It certainly takes me back back a bit. And it's more popular here than it is in Australia, you know. Always has been. And frequently one of the most watched shows on, on TV back in the day. And nowadays on Channel 5, um, apparently Fremantle Media tried to triple the price of it on the BBC. And they said no, so Channel 5 showed it seeing as Fremantle Media and Channel 5 were both owned by the same company at the time, so yeah, there we go, Neighbours, and loads of stars have come from Neighbours, Kylie Minogue, arguably the most famous, who else, Natalie Ambrulia, Holly Valance, Margot Robbie, Delta Goodrum, even Russell Crowe appeared on a few episodes, Liam Hemsworth, let me know, who have I missed, lots of famous actors, coming out of the show over the years. N for Neighbours. And we go on to O for the Outback. Bit of a generic one, this one, but literally means the vast open spaces. And when I say vast, I mean vast. Largely unpopulated desert areas and arid areas in Australia. And there we see a typical windmill that they have out in the Outback there, used to pump water. Awesome stuff, I like that one. This one I like even more though. We do love an animal on the coin, and this is a cool one. It's P for platypus. Absolutely love that. Very inter interesting creatures with a venomous spur on their, um, on their, are they hands? Feet, on their feet, not hands, are they? <laughs> They're egg laying, um, known as a monotreme. I think the only other egg-laying mammals in existence are echidna, which we also see on Australian coinage in the five cents. And these actually also hunt using electrolocation. Wonderful, wonderful creature. Thought by many as a hoax from Europe upon its first discovery. But they are certainly real. Next up, we've got another animal, and it's another cool little dude. It's Q for quokka. Now, you might have seen these on the internet before, and these are famous for smiling in selfies. People love to go up to them, get a little selfies with them, and just the expression on their faces always comes out like they're smiling. Go and check it out, worth a look. Um, and these are marsupials as well, mainly found on uh, bald and rot nest and sometimes near Perth on the mainland. So Bald and Rottnest are, are two islands. Very apt name, that first one. Ha ha ha, very funny you lot. <laughs> um, and they're classed as vulnerable by the IUCN, which is the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Um, hopefully they should be all right out there on those couple of islands. We hope, they're cool little dudes though. 
Right, what have we got next? We have R for a very, very vital service. And this is the Royal Flying Doctor service. Again, another thing which has appeared on TV shows before, various forms, soaps and documentaries. And this is used for obviously emergencies, moving people from remote regions and even taking GPs to remote regions for clinics and stuff like that. And they are vital, vital service in Australia. Many people would be lost without them, I think. Excellent stuff, worthy coin. Speaking of worthy coins, we're followed up by another one instantly and it's the Surf Life Saving. Excellent stuff. Now the most famous ones of these are at Bondi Beach, right? Most famous real ones. The most famous uh, fictional ones are probably the Baywatch, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, if you've not seen the ones on the guys on Bondi Beach, they've actually got a YouTube channel as well. I'll stick a link up in the top. This one of my favourite little shows to spend a little bit of time watching. And these guys are amazing. Some of them are paid, some of them are volunteers. Uh, the paid guys are the best of the best though out there on Bondi. And it's well worth a look at that show. It's worth watching. What else can we say about them? Surf life saving. Um, yeah, I've got a fact here for you. Since 1907, they've rescued over 650,000 people from the water. That is a big number. Of course, not everybody it was probably in immediate danger that second, but they all count. And this is rather an interesting one. And these are a pair of flip-flops. Do you know what they call them? Thongs. There you go, not much more to be said about that. <laughs> But interesting one, T for thongs. That's what they call a flip-flop in Australia. Next up we've got U for ute. And again, it's something we'd call something else, I guess, and we'd probably just call this a pickup, pickup truck. Um, but yeah, iconic across Austra Australia, big in the United States as well. Um, but essential for a lot of the work they do out there. These ranches and stuff and... Yeah, awesome stuff. What have we got next? We have Vegemite. Never tried it myself, not a fan of Marmite, so I'm sure I wouldn't be a fan of this. I think it's pretty much the same. Made from the yeast extract, which back in the day was, and well, probably still is, a waste product um, from breweries. That's where the yeast extract came from. Um, and Vegemite is actually created after the First World War when there was a, a, a supply shortage of Marmite in Australia. So they came up with creating some Vegemite for themselves. And ever since then, it's been top dog. In fact, they, when Marmite became more available again, they were battling it out for many years, but Vegemite nowadays, definitely top dog over in Australia for sure. And nowadays, 22 million jars a year are made. Oh, food again. It's wheat bix. You might think wheat bix. Have they ripped off wheat bix? And not in the slightest. And it's near enough the complete opposite. Wheat bix and wheat bix were created by the same person, and wheat bix were around first. Wheat bix is actually the version. Uh, version and name that was exported out to us. Get your words out, mate. Um, so yeah, 1920s, it was created by Benison Osborne. It's still eaten across Australia, 100 years later, every morning. X, Y, and Z to go. It looks like they struggled with X as much as we did over here. Our guys really copped out, they went for X marks the spot, which, pff, but. <laughs> They've gone for Zantippi. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's a Western Australian town with a population of just 20. So yeah, Zantippi, mildly famous now for being on the coin. Other than that, nobody knew where it was before. For Y, we've got a pretty cool one in my opinion. And it's Y for Yowie. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, 
Sasquatch even. <laughs> Wendigo, a Yeti, call it what you want, it's the same thing. That big hairy mythical beast over there, they call it a Yowie. Also immortalised in chocolate form in their version of a Kinder Egg in Australia. So you get the chocolate on the outside and a toy inside. And that's a Yowie. Cool coin though. And to finish us off, another one that they call something different to what we call it. And it's a Zupa Dupa, which I guess is kind of a brand name, but again, it's become a generic name as well. And it's what we would call an ice pop or a popsicle or an ice rod or an ice drop. And they call it a Zupa Dupa. Very interesting indeed. So, can you pick a favourite out of that lot? 26 different coins. Some toning on that one as well, isn't there? You can really see it when it's sat with the rest, all around the edge. Hmm, not ideal, not ideal. But yeah, here's the, here's the uh, folder again. I think Boomerang's one of the ones I couldn't spot. Got the thongs there, Kangaroo, Royal Flying Doctors, Surf Life Saving, the Esky. Ramsey Street, Neighbours, the Ute, lots of the food there. Some stuff that isn't on there as well though. He's got a Zupa Dupa. I see you got sandwiches, that one on there was it? Maybe it's the Vegemite. The Footy, Quokka, Wheat Bix, G'day. There's the Yowie, and the meat, he's having a meat pie. The platypus, the hill's hoist. There's a Jillaroo, cricket, didgeridoo, Zantippi. Any more I missed? Let me know in the comments. I think it's a great little set. I can't remember exactly how much I paid, if I'm honest, guys. I think it's around 40 or 50 pounds for the whole set. Do be careful of the import charges, though, unless you can buy one over here, and then you haven't got to worry about that. Um, but let me know what you think. Pick a favorite out. Favourite for me, we love an animal coin. I think a platypus is up there, quokka. The yaoi is so cool, I'm going to have to go with that. Who doesn't want a mythical creature like that on the coin? It's not your typical unicorn dragon, is it? It's the Bigfoot. Thanks a lot, guys. Drop us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you for more coiny goodness very, very soon. Take care.